Jared, good evening. Ni hao, Robbo. <laughs> good evening in Chinese Mandarin. No, it hasn't all quite panned out today, Koshi. So using, using the tourism thread, where the bloody hell were you? <laughs> well, I, I was caught on sitting in a plane on the tarmac in Hong Kong for, uh, for eight hours, would you believe, because Shanghai was basically closed because of a um, uh, because of fog, so the flight was 12 hours late. But you know, it's not about me; it's about the club, which um, it's such a historic day for Port Adelaide. Little old working class Port Adelaide is now um, really building great cultural links into uh, into China, which is not just about games, but also other things. Um, um, uh, putting the game on TV here, uh, our, our weekly. Um, um, documentary that plays on CCTV here in China and uh, and gets a couple of million in the audience. It's about bringing our game to the Chinese, our biggest trading partner, our biggest source of tourists uh, to Australia as well. So the biggest question associated with the day, David, back here in Australia is, will it happen? Will you achieve this ambition next year? Is it a stretch goal well, or is it realistic? Now, hopefully, Jared, we're building a reputation of a club that makes things happen. And we think outside the square. We try and, if you like, disrupt AFL, whether it be game day presentations, whether it be styles of footy week play, whether it's attracting great people into a high performance team. This is just the next one of our goals. And uh, look, um, uh, we are confident that we can have a game here four points um, next year in next year's competition. We've, we think we've got all the logistics covered. Uh, we've got to convince the AFL Commission of that. And, uh, but hey, Malcolm Turnbull says we are. Who, <laughs> who, who's got to knock back the, the Prime Minister? Congratulations, Kochi. I was one of those people who said, what does this guy think he's doing being president and living in Sydney? And you've shown that, you've shown that you're, a, you're, a, you're a go-getter and you know, it, it's, quite a, it's quite an intelligent thing to do because there's so much money in Australia for Australian sport and to go and access millions and millions of dollars from a foreign yep. country to support your little, little club, I mean, I, I just think it's a, a terrific effort. Everyone says, oh, a glass half empty, it won't work. I, I'm so excited. I generally am to see that, you know, you're doing this for the, for the competition. I'm, I'm, I'm glad because, you know, this is how you innovate. This is how you take the game forward, by taking chances. And remember, we've been committing to China for the last two or three years. We've had our business lunches in Hong Kong. We get about 400, 500 expats each year. We sponsor the China national team in the International Cup. Uh, we sponsor Auskick in southern China. We've had two um, AFL development officers on the payroll for the last year. Keith Thomas, our chief executive, who's been a driving force behind this, sort of, it was my crazy idea. Uh, Keith has, and Andrew Hunter have developed this beyond my, even my wildest dreams. Uh, Keith has a great saying, you give before you take. So we've shown our credentials. We've shown the Chinese we're committed to doing something here. And as a result, we've got a three-year, multi-million dollar deal to develop the game in China. And so it uh, hasn't been the AFL doing this, it's been us. And, uh, and we're really proud of what we're doing and we think the potential is enormous. You need an opponent and a natural fit. So if I yep. was having a, a scan, you would say Gold Coast Tourism, Western Sydney Property Development. A have you got a natural fit opponent yep. for this? Look, look, I think there is a lot of natural fits. Uh, the West Australian teams with, you know, the mining and resource links to China. Um, as you say, the Queensland teams with, with tourism and property development, uh, Sydney with property development and the Chinese influence there. It's up to the AFL Commission to decide on that. We, we've got our preferred partners, um, but I think it will be exciting for other clubs to actually uh, be able to leverage what we've done over the last couple of years and what we're doing now to help their club. And, and it's the whole code. Um, you know, when we, we all go to America on holidays, we want to go to an NBA game because that's America's sport or an NFL game. It's sort of like a, a, a cultural experience. And um, imagine if we could tap into a tiny amount of the one and a half million Chinese tourists that visit Australia every year and, and, 
get that same enthusiasm from them that they've seen the game on C CCTV and they say, wow, I'd like to go to the G or I'd love to go to Adelaide Oval and see it live because I love this game. There are all sorts of possibilities for everyone. You avoided my question spectacularly well. Koshi, have you done the groundwork and got somebody to agree to play you if this comes to fruition next year? Um, look, we've, we've um, yes, I've, I've talked to a, another president. Um, I'm not going to, going to hide that. I wanted to test the waters, um, and yes. But, but again, it's up to the AFL Commission to decide, and we're, um, we're presenting to the Commission on Tuesday our China plan, because remember, it is multi-layered. It's not just about the game. It's about that, that, that cultural bridge that our game brings between China and and Australia. Our intention was that, that if you're a Chinese business person with the interest in Australia and you wanted to connect with our community through footy, Port Adelaide is your club to do it through. And and I, I look at Port Adelaide as, you know, Port Adelaide is to AFL in Australia what maybe the Bolshoi Ballet is to <laughs> Russia. Do you think, Robbo? Or is that... No, I've never I'm been to Russia, but I'm really, and I want to congratulate, congratulate you and thank you, Kochi, because we were told today that Port Adelaide are going to foot all expenses for AFL 360 <laughs> to come over for the week leading up, and we're going to we're going to do four, four shows from over there. Sure, um, I think that'd be a great experience, but but imagine. Uh, so many AFL supporters uh, pencil in a weekend away to watch their team play interstate and, and make it a weekend. Imagine penciling in a week to Shanghai to watch AFL and, you know, 23 million people, same population as Australia in this one city, the entrepreneurial heart of China. You've got Hong Kong down the road. You've got the Terracotta Warriors in um, Xi'an. So there's a lot to do. It's really exciting on a not just for footy clubs, but for supporters as well. I want some clarity. I've read today, Kochi, that it won't be a Port Adelaide home game. It'll have to be an, the club you're talking no. about, their home game. Can you, can you clarify that, please? Yes it, yes, it will be, because contractually with our deal with Adelaide Oval, we've got to play all our home games there. Um, and, and, so, and a lot of clubs do this now. A lot of clubs swap ideas and you know we play Melbourne and Alice Springs every year and and we leverage off the back of that um, so yes it it will be another team's home game but the advantage for them is they'll be properly compensated for uh, for giving up that home game but they'll be able to leverage off the back of all the work we've done in China to broaden their commercial um, appeal to Chinese interests as well well you know we, we we're led to believe David that you know clubs such as North Melbourne make several hundred thousand dollars and we know Hawthorne make millions playing out of Tasmania over five years if they can make that much money flying over the Tasman, how much money could the club expect to play their home game in China? Is it foolish for us to think that it could be as much as a million dollars? Look, um, initially, you know, we'd, we'd want uh, a partner club that was excited about the potential. Uh, it's a risk for us, you know. We're, <laughs> we're actually putting our proverbials on the, on the line to do this. So the first year or two, I have no idea where it's going to land. It's a three-year deal. We're committed to the long term. And I'm confident that, that um, once we bed the annual event in to, um, to the AFL calendar, if the, if the AFL Commission agree, um, then the potential will build year on year and it's not unreasonable to start talking about those sorts of numbers. To be credible, does it need a stadium that actually has interested parties rather than those just bust in to observe a novelty? And yeah, I think it does need interested parties. We've taken a look at a couple of stadiums. Um, over here, they're all rectangles, of course, built for, for their brand of footy, uh, soccer. Um, so uh, there are some stadiums with running tracks around. There's, and I've only become uh, <laughs> a recent sort of semi-expert in this. Um, turf technology around the world in terms of covering running tracks and re-turfing a surface for, uh, for six or eight days is quite extraordinary at the moment. It's done in the Middle East, it's done in America. So there are answers to all of this. They come with a price, of course, mm. and that's what we have to weigh up.
David, we've got to go in about 45 seconds. I presume you're out celebrating tonight. I presume it's Chinese food, lemon chicken, or the sweet and sour <laughs> pork in batter. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it is, it is, it is Chinese food, and um, yeah, we are celebrating, and uh, because it's Australia Week here in yeah. in Shanghai, that's why the Prime Minister was here today, and he had a big lunch of eighteen hundred business people, both Chinese and and Australians, coming together. Just shows the power of the connection with China. And you don't need to be a coal miner. You don't need to be an iron ore miner. You can be a little AFL club from, uh, from Adelaide to really be part of the China boom up here. And uh, that's what makes us so excited. Good on you, Koshi. Well done.